Oh, I'm live. Hello, Internet. Hi. This is my accordion. You've seen it before. This is why I stopped playing it. All right. Um, the clips at the side are off. But there's no keys pressed and no... Um, I'm not... There's, there's, a, there's a button down here that lets it... Let's the airflow. Now, with that button untouched and none of these keys pressed, the accordion is supposed to be very resistant to the bellows opening. Um, I don't know to what degree you could pick it up by the keyboard with the bellows following along, but this is what my mine does, you see? There's, no res there's very little resistance. It just falls. And then when I set it down and let it, it just... Boom, falls right back down on its bellows. You see, oh, and you'll periodically hear my, my, my husband's voice making noise in the background. He's working in the bathroom doing plumbing and he gets a little carried away. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take out the pins on both sides. What I have here is gasket tape. This is supposed to go here. Let's hope I bought enough. Um, I don't measure anything, so I might actually be very disappointed and find I didn't buy enough. I'll do one side at a time. I'll surely have enough for one side, and that'll be a start. And if I have to buy more, the other side won't be too much trouble. These are, what do they call them? Reed valve boosters. Accordion reed valve boosters. It's a very flimsy piece of metal that's got a bit of springy to it and a little dollop of a piece of red leather, which I presume does, it doesn't appear to have any kind of stickiness to it. I don't know if you're supposed to make it wet, but you glue it on the leather and it, it helps support the leather. And I forgot all about fashioning my paper clip. Right, I need to fashion a paper clip. I need to fashion a paper clip. Let's see what I can find for paper clip. I brought out all my 3D plastic finishing kit here, all my tools for 3D plastic finishing. I expect I will find a piece of paper clip in here, a piece of wire. Not um, in here. No, that's all. That's all stuff for making earrings and jewelry. Stuff to glue on. Oh yeah. I've got a mood ring. It's a really nice one with the epoxy and the little silver moon. Unfortunately, regardless of how much heat you apply, it will never again actually provide you with colors other than black. I don't know why. It doesn't change color anymore. Take it old. So there's no paperclip wire in there. Uh, I've got to read around in here and see if I spot something. Actually, I don't need to fashion something. I think I can use this. I have um, Reed Valve. I have kept a website open for all this time. Um, that will not do. No, I do need to fashion a paper clip. And I'm not sure where to find a paper clip with which to make this. <laughs> I don't work with paper very much, so consequently there are very few paper clips. And, um, yeah, this might be the trick. I can use this. Sure I can. I think so. Um, let me just move you, spin you around, show you the website I'm looking at. I need to make a tool this shape. So I've already got that part. All I really have to do is bend the end up and I should be able and maybe clip this and I should be able to turn this bobby pin into a lovely version of that tool. And now I check the live window, make sure that I am. Oh, see, you're supposed to be focused on the table and unfortunately my ample chest. Please disregard my bosoms. Nature gave them to me without asking. Oh, well, there was a period in my life where I wanted larger, but not never wanted them that large. Okay, enough talk about such 
things. Let's fashion this, as I was saying, into that tool I, I saw. So there's that leg part up. And I think I will just cut this off. Oh, believe me, I don't actually use bobby pins and they are cheap and easy to find. So modifying one for a, a job like this. And remember, it's not just tool using, it's tool creating that really sets a species apart. It wasn't, it wasn't enough that the chimpanzees were witnessed using tools. It was when they were modifying things to make a better tool that everybody got excited. Oh, there we go, because it's not clipped and I'm picking it up. All righty, so as I say, this is an illustration of the problem. There is a lot of air leakage. So first step is to remove the silver pins from the from around the body. You may not have the right pliers for this job. No, these I need blunt nose. I need something blunt nosed with a bit of a bit of um, a bit of texture to it. Like that's blunt nose, but it's smooth. But it might work. Let's give it a try. Texture might actually damage the chrome finish on these. Perfect. That'll do the job. Okay. As I said, you may periodically hear noise from the basement. Um, plumbing does not come out, come without a great deal of profanity. And I'm sorry, I hope you can't quite make it out. Um, but I'm not under the illusion that any speaking human being doesn't know all the bad words in the, in the language. However old they are, they'll pick it up real quick anyway. I think it's better, better than to isolate your children from profanity. It's better to teach them how profanity makes you look. It's, it makes you look like you don't have a lot of self-discipline. Uh, you have a poor vocabulary. And you're not very creative. And it's really very embarrassing. I, I can't even close a door. I can't go down there and make him stop. He knows I'm recording. And uh, <laughs> I, bet, I bet the microphone's picking up every last syllable. OK, now what I'm doing with the tape here is I'm taping each pin directly above the hole from whence it came. Like so. Um, I'm also going to take some pencil and I'm going to make some marks. I'm going to make marks on it so I know, so I can get it lined up properly when I come back to it. I'm not going to use indelible ink. I'm going to use a pencil. Pencils are easy to remove from most surfaces, although they don't draw on all surfaces. Let's see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I color this in so and so. I can also color on the accordion tape and it won't last. It will wear off. But it'll make a shadowy gray mark to help make sure that I orient everything exactly where it used to be when I'm done. See? I'll be able to find that. That's important. If if it's important to make sure each pin goes back into its original hole, then it's also important to make sure that the original holes line up the way they originally did. So is that all on the front? Yeah. Now I have to do the ones on the other side. I would take off the straps. I agree they're awkward, but... Um, I'm afraid the leather is too old, and if I mess with them and try to undo the buckles, the, the leather will crack, and I'll have to buy new straps. I'm not in a hurry to do that, because it looks to me like straps are pricey things. So I'm just kind of hoping to keep them. Yeah, it would be easier to do this facing me, but then you'd see nothing. Oh, yes, it did. 
I, I can see it though. It didn't fly under the under the fridge. Phew. That could have been a bit of a nuisance if it had flown off under the fridge. That would have derailed this video quite badly. We're in my kitchen. Um, everything's done in my kitchen. I, I have a kitchen and a living room and some utility spaces in the basement. And I sleep in the attic. So there's just really not a lot of... Sp I mean, I don't have a workshop. I, I used to. Um, I have the remains of a workbench downstairs covered in... Currently covered in all of the bits and pieces for Mr.'s plumbing. And I really wanted to, I could clear space, but it's not a very comfortable place to work. It's kind of cold. I can't sit down. I don't have anything nearby to amuse me. Um, there's no TV, no computer, no nothing. It's just, I don't know. It's not a comfortable space. And um, there's not a lot of room to move either. It's crowded down there. It's a crowded little house. I've been working on reducing the amount of stuff that I own, downsizing, but it's going slowly. Uh, it's hard to dispose of it without just disposing of it. I don't feel right just throwing things away. And a lot of stuff is going to Value Village. But some stuff just seems like I ought to be able to sell it secondhand. I mean, I need money. And then I can't sell it secondhand, but I don't understand why. Or, you know, I have to photograph it. Uh, like I've got a whole, I've got a collection of five Furbies that I no longer want. But in order to get rid of them, I have to take pictures of them all and post them on eBay because they're worth something. Oh, now you see, I'm ready to open this and I'm not really sure which part, I think the this part, I think the this this the joint is yes that's the the tape that I'm replacing right there. Um, oh, for whatever reason, it's not coming apart for me. Let's put this on top of the valves so they don't suddenly fly across the kitchen when I sneeze or something. I don't want to put in any prying tools for fear of scratching or nicking or cutting something. I don't have enough experience to do that sort of thing. Um, I think I see a bit of a gap forming here. Do you, do you see a gap forming? Oh my. Hmm. I've had this open. I opened this thing like this right there in the store. I had it all. So why am I now finding it difficult to achieve? That's what I wonder. Why am I now having trouble with something that... There we go. There we go. Once I reminded it that we've been here before, it lost its nerves and can handle it again. Okay. So... Um, we've got multiples of reed blocks going on. I can show you. This would be an example of a leather onto which I'm going to put a spring and which I'm also going to use this tool here to try and, and take some of the curve out of it. That's going to be art. That's going to be finessing like art. That's not going to be just a straight yank. It's going to have to be done delicately and carefully. And I have to take all these reed blocks out. So that's what I have to do with this half. And here, when I get to this, this is the this is the tape I'm replacing right here. This white leather here is what this is for. Let's have us a look-see. I think that will work. I think it will. I was going to try black foam weather stripping, and uh, not only did I not like the black, but it was much too wide, and I couldn't see me trimming it all the way. 
Okay, let's take the bottom half off. Let's let's take this thing apart before we begin taking off gasket material and such. Um, so again, the same thing on these bottom ones. Take them off and tape them in place. These ones I've not had off yet. Now, they're not screws. They're just pins. That's all they are. They're not tacks. They're not screws. They're pins in a pre-drilled hole. It's meant that you should be able to do this. My father said he took up accordion because when he was in the Merchant Marine, he discovered that it was an excellent way to smuggle cigarettes. And that was his big thing, was smuggling cigarettes. I wonder sometimes if tobacco was the only thing that ever found its way inside his accordion. I know he was a drinker, but was there ever a time when it was marijuana cigarettes? He didn't strike me as a marijuana smoker, but then he was a family man by the, by the time I knew him, right? He was my father. And I was the youngest. But then he was also from a very straight family. So it would have been so very easy for him to pull these pins, stuff a bunch of cigarettes in here, just fill it up on both sides. Um, and if you did it carefully enough, you could still play it. You might even take some of the reed blocks out and store them separately. And Customs is highly unlikely to ask you about your spare reed blocks or what the heck they are. So then you could take out the reed blocks. You could, you know, just don't play the base buttons. Take out the base blocks and don't play these base buttons. And then let customs, you know, make you sh demonstrate that it plays. And one half of it would, and the other half would be stuffed full of contraband. So that's one of the things I like about the accordion, actually. Um, it's the sense it gives me of being connected to my father. I wasn't really able to connect with him properly in life. And um, it's too late now. But uh, I never really thought he liked me. I wasn't male enough for him. I wasn't normal enough for him. My father considered women to be like a pet species, the way you think of a dog. And it always surprised him when a woman was able to accomplish things. The only thing a woman could do that would gain his approval was earn money. <laughs> really? If you came home with cash for your endeavors, then that was proof in my father's eyes that your endeavors had merit. He'd lived through the, uh, through the war, you know, World War II, the Dutch famine, and the Dutch had one heck of a famine. I was, I'd like to learn more about that history. If you've got any links to any documentaries about it, I would really love to know more. Um, I know it lasted years because the, 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 pretty much the entire German occupation because the German soldiers just confiscated any and all food that the people might produce. or And so, you know, if you, if you had a loaf of bread or you had a potato or you had a, a round of cheese, you didn't tell anybody. You smuggled it. You snuck home with it, hidden away in your coat, and uh, shared it with those you loved dearest in life. That one went flying and landed at my back. Ah, I have my hands on it. That was goofy. Yeah, so there was a time when people were eating tulip bulbs and fighting over potatoes in the street. And that was when my parents were in their teenage years. So it had a profound impact on their consideration of the value of things, especially money. Because even back then, if you had money, you had anything you wanted. Money was your ticket. Oh, my goodness. The strap just disconnected itself. 
Huh. I had no intention of disconnecting this strap. I guess it was too loose, huh? You really don't get a lot of variation. All right, now we're still prying at this. Yeah, I see movement. I want to be very gentle with it. You can see there are more reed blocks in here. In fact, some of them already have springs on them. Look at that. Already have springs. Reed boosters. Look at that. Probably because these are the base notes and they need heavy reinforcement. This one here, perhaps I'll be able to stroke that with my tool, including the booster. Yeah, so... This is, today's project is finally underway. And Mr. has finally simmered down and quit screaming obscenities from the basement, which is nice. Yes, these outbursts are frequent. Yes, I do live with that on a regular basis. Yes, I do enjoy it when he's at work. Well... I don't know what I can do about it in terms of not putting up with it. He's got a problem, obviously. It would be nice if he recognized that it was abnormal to behave that way. But he thinks I'm just telling him for power trip reasons when I try to explain that it's not, not normal. Okay. That's the bellows separated from the reed blocks. Sha, okay. The reed blocks. And these, these are screws that I can take out and then I can remove the reed blocks to work on them all by themselves. And yes, you can see these have already got those reed boosters on them. You can see them right here. These. This is what I'm applying is some of these to some of these other leathers. And I'm going to try and flatten these out. Take some of the bend out using that tool that I, you saw me make. But first, which side of this? Yes, okay, let's remove some of this old bellows gasket. Doing this so the camera can see it is a real twist. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of glue they used. This is the kind of glue I found. I thought might work for all of this. What's it say it's for? Glue with two-way two applicator. Remove inner seal. Great for most papers. Permanent adhesive. I don't know. I think it's going to work for this. I think you want something fairly delicate. It's leather to leather. Leather is so porous, it tends to glue well. And also, the gasket tape may be already pre-glued. Pre yeah, 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 it's got this um, peel and stick. And because it's got the peel and stick, I can actually measure it thusly. Oh, good. Let's find out if I've got enough to do the whole thing. And where is the cut on this one? Is this a solid piece or does it have a join? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you cut it, you cut it at a diagonal so the join is not a flush cut. That's right. I don't see any place where this existing gasket is. It's probably stamped, stamped out of a sheet of leather, not rolled off of a, not made off of a roll of tape. Hmm. See if I can improve your view. That's better. So, the pressure over the years, and it's been a few, has made it sticky around places that weren't glued as well. 
These are really nice exactos. You can stick them on your finger like this. Get a lot of control. I quite like it. I use it a lot for my plastic work. Well, my little 3D boxes, they, uh, they have a lot of plastic, excess plastic that has to be trimmed off as a result of the printing process. And then it has to be sanded and smoothed and fitted and checked and... Ooh, that's just coming right off. Yeah, sanded and smoothed and fitted and checked. And then um, painted after that. Yeah. And when I do the traveling luggage, I have to do even more work. Oh, it was blunt cut. It was, it had a cut end. It had a cut end part way down here, and it was a blunt cut. There, it had a. It was. It was from tape, or what lacing, and it was blunt cut. So that was this one. Wow. It's actually quite nice. It's quite strong. I could use that as a lacing for something. That's worth keeping for crafts. Yeah, I'm one of those. But I do try to organize it, and I do periodically throw things away if I haven't been making proper use. So this is the bellows tape that I... Well, that's the bellows. The tape goes on here. Ah, that's where the tape goes. I accidentally bought a bunch of this tape in white. So if I had spots where it was damaged, I could replace that, but it clearly isn't. It's in really good condition. I really think that I should scrape clean this face surface, though. Oh, I was going to test to see if I've got enough bellows tape to go the whole way. Well, I'll just do it this way. Oh, that won't give me an accurate... Ah, this might give me an accurate amount of measure. Just to put it on like that. You know, if I can control it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut that off. With scissors. All my life, I've pronounced scissors as skizzers when there's, when I'm more or less by myself or with people I feel safe with, or feel like I'm with people I feel safe with on account of it's the internet, I can't see you. Oh, hello, Chim and Nerf. Oh, sure, I can repair it. It's what I'm doing. I just needed the bits. It's not difficult. So, let's see. Can I? Yeah, okay. So that's one. Let's, oh, I can do both. I have enough. I have enough to do both. I do. I do. I do. I do. I can do both. Yes, I can. Ah, you see that? Gorgiosity. We'll cut them both long because they're going to get cut on with a diagonal and I've got leftover. Excellent. Very good. Got this left over. Hooey, hooey boy. That's great. Let's see. How's the view? I wish I knew how to pronounce that. Chima nerf. I don't even know what that chime nerf. Chime nerf, chima nerf. It seems like chimney, but earth. I've never done this before. I don't know if it's difficult because I haven't done it before. But uh, it doesn't look complicated. I've got a really great pile of tools to work with. Like this will help me get it clean. This is sandpaper. I've got some modeling tools. Oh yeah, that's working really well. That'll get it. That'll get the surface clean without damaging anything. This isn't rocket science. Rocket science, I would be a little, little concerned about. But this, nah. Very simple crafts work. 
The most important thing is just don't be in a rush. You know, don't be on a deadline. Take your time. Be willing to quit early and come back to it another day. And make sure you got your stuff together. You've got what you need for it. And, uh, you know, courage. You must have courage. That's a big one. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's the mastery of it. It's being able to say to the fear, no, you're not in charge here. I'm going to do what I want to do. And if you're right, well, I'll deal with the consequences. But you're probably not. And you just go ahead and make things happen. Wow. So the gaskets are made of leather. Is this one? This is not. The new gasket is not leather. It's foam. The original gasket is leather, and there's all this leather bit left behind here. I need a brush. I need a little brush. It's my son's name, Chime, and he just liked he just to play with Nerf pistols. It was his email name, and I took it over. Bridget, hello, Bridget. Okay, so chime, chime nerf. All right, but it's Bridget. Hello, Bridget. It's good to see you on my channel. Isn't this a nifty tool? You can actually move the sandpaper a little bit to give you a clean point to work with. La, 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 la. Like so. Isn't that neat? Of course, and then when, when the paper is exhausted, it, it can be replaced. You could put another one on it. I think I do have spares in my collection. I bought it at the modeling, modeling, model and hobby shop. I take it the audio is good enough. You can hear me. See, where's that brush? Oh, nice, 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 nice. I should be wearing some kind of some kind of spectacles because my eyes aren't very good, but I because I run around with blurry vision so much, I forget that it's possible to see better detail than I'm seeing. It really helps with the housekeeping though. You don't know how dirty the house is if you can't see it properly. And that means you have less housekeeping to do because it doesn't bother you as much. <laughs> After all, no one, no, well, I shouldn't say nobody visits, but the few, the few who do visit are not concerned with issues like the quality of my housekeeping. If they were, they wouldn't come around because it's not there. <laughs> I used to be a really good housekeeper back when I had energy. And, uh, da, uh, I can't remember the Dutch word for a grown woman. I know Maishi for a girl, but oh well, sorry, but da, as in good day, huda. Yeah, my Dutch is so poor. It was childish for the 70s, and it hasn't been updated since. My father was in the Dutch Merchant Marine, and most of my extended family still lives in Holland. Cousins and aunts and uncles that are still alive, and, and second cousins and their children, and many groups of people I hardly know. I've often wished I had been born in Holland. But then I think, oh, I just scratched it. Oops. Oh, that's a shame. That's not too bad, but it might affect the air seal. I'll try smoothing it out a little bit. I don't know. Too late now. I've often thought, well, if I'd go, what if I, what if I made that wish and I was granted that wish? And I was granted the wish of being the version of me that never left Holland. Okay, so she's out there. 
and she wanted to be Canadian. So she got granted her wish. And I'm her, and she's me. And the me that wished to be in Holland is already there. But because it wouldn't be the same life if you were if it didn't include the longing to be somewhere else, that does not get cured. Did I confuse you? Jungen. Oh, Bridget is a Jungen? <laughs> no, you're not. Oh, yeah. Okay, so continuing to gently scrape. I think about my father on a rocking ship late at night on a sea passage crossing the Atlantic Ocean, sitting in his officer's room because he was the chief engineer. So he had a shop, but he had an office and he had lots of space with his accordion in pieces doing just exactly what I'm doing right now, just like this. Long, slow, quiet nights of precision. Hmm. Most accordion owners at some point have to learn to do this. Now, I could pay the guy downtown to do it. There is someone here in this city who can do this, which is becoming extremely rare, I might add. I, uh, I'm just not that rich. No, my mo YouTube channel doesn't make any money. I live off of my husband's income, 100%. And he is a tradesman. He puts people's carpet down for a living. Carpet, vinyl, tile. So he works hard for what he earns, and it feeds us well. But there sure isn't much room for extras like hiring somebody else to cut your hair or fix your accordion. I used to be so poor I couldn't have bought the parts for the accordion if I'd have gotten one. And of course, before the internet, I wouldn't have been able to find out how to fix it. would have spent a lot of time in the library just trying to find the right book. Yes, but you're not a boy, so what is the name for a grown woman? You're a grown woman. That's the one I want to know. Uh, I used to know it. Mevrouw. Dag. Goeiedag, mevrouw. There we go. Almost got a whole sentence put together. My accent. I'm so glad I can't hear how bad it is. <laughs> I must sound I must sound like I'm trying to chew rocks while I say it. <laughs> oh dear oh me. It's been too long. I went to Holland in 1975 and met my cousins. And uh, one of my cousins, Esther, was really good at helping me learn Dutch vocabulary. There's only so much you can learn at the age of eleven. And yes, all the math mathematicians watching this video later will know how old I am, because I was 11 in 1975, except I turned 12 later that year. My birthday's in November. Yes, I know, it's coming up next month. I was thinking of doing a daily vlog post next month, my birthday vlog month. I thought that might be fun. Instead of vlogmas or vlogween, I'll do my birthday vlogging where I vlog my entire birth month. It might help to spell some of the uh, sense of never, never, you know, like, oh, my birthday's never important enough to anybody. Perhaps by broadcasting all month, I'll feel more connected to other people and that will make me feel less neglected. That's what I'm thinking just make me feel more important. Because after all, a birthday is supposed to be that time when you feel important. See, what I'm doing is I'm actually dragging with the dull side of the knife down so that it's scraping more than it's cutting. Okay, this is the last side on this. 
the last end on this side and then I switch to the other one. I switch to the other side, like down there, because there's two of these. Two of these to be cleaned off and removed. And then I can work on the reeds and the reed blocks. Oops. All right. So how's the weather there, Chime Nerf? Bridget? 1962. I was born in 63, actually. Late 63. How's the weather in Holland? So you were born in 62. That's when my sister Carola was born. So you're the same age as my older sister. And then a year before that was my brother in 1961. 60? Oh, I'm losing track now. Hang on, no. Carola was 61. John was 60. And my parents came over in 59 pregnant with my brother. We used to joke and say that he was made in Holland but born in Canada. As a kid, I pictured a Made in Holland stamped on his butt, and that's what it meant to me, and I'd laugh and laugh. But all the adults would titter amused at this little girl saying Made in Holland because they're picturing the very biologic version of, biological version of Made. Oh, I'm getting quite the dust build up here. Got an ashtray over there. I'm putting this stuff in. Okay, let's do the same thing all over again. This tool. Wonder if I can spot the join. Oh, this is interesting. It's actually oh dear. It's considerably wider here than everywhere else. Huh. Will this be a problem or does this split the difference? No, it's narrow. See that? I wonder if that matters. Hmm. Do I put it on the inside or the outside? Well, it'll be easier to tell which side goes where. Oh, it's because of these, these clicky thingies that I don't even know how to use. I don't even know what they do. Oh, they select a different read block. Okay. All right, so the foam should be on the inside because that's where it's going to make the best contact. And then it'll just be a visual issue that it's got a bit of gap to it. You'll, you know, and you, you'll hardly see it. It won't bother me. I don't think it'll create a problem with function. That it's thicker here than everywhere else. This is a separate piece entirely, actually. This stuff is so old, it has to go. I can't just leave part of it in because that's easier for me. It's fully compressed. It's some kind of very soft leather, like lambskin or something. It's very soft. Doe skin, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's the sort of thing that you make jewelry that the First Nation Canadians used for jewelry, used to use for jewelry when they were still working with natural leathers. They tend to um, work with more man-made materials these days. So it was suede side up and leather side down. Huh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you can see. 
You can see the uh, difference in the thickness is quite dramatic. All right, more of the same. Clean these edges. Actually, I prefer to use the, I to do it this way. Yeah, this tool is nice. Really, really nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, I'll show you with the uh, 3D printed objects what it is that I have to clean. Good weather. Our weather is good today, too. This is called a raft, and it's uh, it's there to help the print stay f the print stay flat, although you can kind of see this one did warp. It's there to help the print stay flat, but it often leaves pieces behind. So that's one of the cleaning jobs you have to do. And um, there's stuff called support material. Turns out, where's that one that won't lid, lid needs extensive finishing? Is it this one? Yeah, uh, the camera can't show it, can it? No, I don't think so. Camera's not going to show it. But it's got a lot of ridging here because it was printed this way instead of this way. So I will be employing the sandpaper there. When I get down to painting boxes, I should live stream that sometime. Painting my boxes, that'd be a fun thing to do. I never would have thought that it was possible to actually just sit on camera with the internet doing something time consuming and fussy and meticulous like this and visiting with people. That's just, it's, a, it's amazing. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. The 21st century is amazing. It's nothing like we tried to imagine it might be, and so much more than we ever could have thought. Yeah, okay, that's working good. Interesting, there's two very fine holes in the, in the wood here. I don't know why. Cleaning out that corner. Let me get this back around to where the camera can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I wind up working backwards. Let's see, I keep wanting more. Let's see, I keep wanting clean, clean sandpaper here, and then forgetting that I can turn the sandpaper rather than the tool. Yeah. Oh, putting on this leather is kind of intimidating. It's going to be a challenge because it's got to bend around the corners and it's or this foam. It's it's going to have to bend around the corners. Or maybe I should just cut it as I go. I don't know. That's... Hmm. I did find a website for that. I don't think it's open anymore. No, I don't, well, felt, no, it isn't open anymore. I only left open the one on how to make the tool. Anyway, it's too late for research. Must move forward. Game is afoot. The job is underway. Enough second guessing and research. Dive in and get it done. Or as the Americans would say, get her done. Get her done. That always makes my husband laugh when someone says that. He got a real chuckle out of the comic that made that phrase famous. Sounds like the plumbing's turned back on. That's good. Hubby's been doing the bathroom plumbing on the renovation. He's done most of the work. All I did was paint the walls. Plaster the drywall and paint the walls. 
course, now you can't hear me talking anymore. But that'll pass. In fact, it's passing now. Yeah, he's been uh, working on the plumbing for the bathroom, bathtub. And I have been assured that I'll be able to use the bathtub to take a bath today. I won't have a proper faucet on it yet, but I will have access to water and the drain works. So I'll be able to use the new bathtub for the first time tonight. And boy, I'm excited about that. It's quite a lovely bathroom when we're done. I can already see it in my head. The uh, tile, tile surround has to be built yet. And uh, I'm not sure if we're using real tile or not. We might be using some kind of plastic paneling that's pressed to look like tile because I'm okay with that. It would cost less and be a lot less work. Yeah, there's a gouges here too from previous repairs, I guess. And there's little pin, little nail pinholes. I wonder if it has to do with how, I mean, the bellows appear to be pasted in. Um, yeah, this stuff's pasted on. I don't know. I think if I have to do anything with the bellows tape, I'd rather take it in. I don't know what to do with the tape I accidentally bought off eBay when I was, I meant to buy this stuff. And I selected the wrong product. And I wound up buying this stuff. Except mine isn't a lovely gold color. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Gold, silver, gold, silver. Gold, silver, gold, silver. Just gold. Gold, silver, gold, silver. How interesting. Three sides are, are alternating gold and silver tape, but the front side is just gold. I wonder how that comes to be. Was that a stylistic choice of the designer or evidence of repair. I must say, though, that this accordion has been well cared for and well treated. It hasn't been abused at all. It's in very good shape for its age. I pity the poor person who actually buys my other aquarium from the, from the music shop. Because, <laughs> are you even still there? Chime nerve. Chime nerve, are you there? I can't tell if you're still there, Bridget, but okay. Yeah, so um, I bought the first accordion that I bought. Is it a secondhand music shop with pretty high price tag on it? Um, higher than it really deserves. But we'll see. Uh, the local market does not have the same prices as say eBay yet people still don't compare the price on eBay versus the price being charged locally so there's a possibility that they will pay it which would be nice because it would help cover some of the cost of having bought this but it might take a while not a lot of accordion players in the world however that being said the accordion is becoming the latest ironic hip instrument um the hipsters are getting into it. They're like, oh, yeah, the accordion's really ironic and funny. And, and, it, and it makes good music. And it's a really good instrument. And it's really useful and handy. And you can play it on the street. And you can play it without electricity. You can play it in the woods. You can play it on the back of your bus. Lots of reasons to appreciate an accordion. Woohoo! Wah, wah. Hello there. Nah, it doesn't work. Hello there. Oh, oh, oh. Now it doesn't make a good puppet. <sighs> Shall we begin? Right, as I said, I was going to cut this like that. That was something I did read online. Okay, this is the easy side, so we'll do it first. Um, I'm going to assume that there's less stress on the ends, and I'm going to put the join on the ends. Oh, 
And once you begin sticking it down, it stays right where you put it. That's good. I like that. I just have to be real, really, really attentive and careful and patient, especially patient with all of this going on. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Once you once you stick it, it stays. So as long as I don't peel too much at a time and I don't make any mistakes, this will go where I want it to go. I don't have to pull it taut. I, yeah, you wouldn't want to. You want the uh, accordion parts joining to do put all the pressure. It's going to stick out a little bit when I'm done. Not too badly. I won't need to trim it at all. See a bit extra dust here. That will certainly interfere with the adhesion. I have to wash my hands. I've got some weird sticky... I don't know what, but it's not very nice. See this towel? I wove that myself on a loom. I made this out of yarn, cotton yarn. I get such a kick out of that. Being able to make your own stuff. The only thing I need to learn there is how to gather and spin wool. Wool, or but that's not going to happen. I thought about it. I'm not going to grow sheep. I'm not going to shear sheep. I'm not going to card and spin yarn. Those things I can buy. But being able to take pretty inexpensive string and turn it into fabric. I even made a pair of pants. That makes me feel good. Yeah, this is, uh oh, whoops, oh yeah, you can kind of pull it up if you insist, that's good. I'm trying to push it as far into the corner as I can, thinking that will increase the uh, pressure on it. These are getting on my nerves to take those off. Now I'm remembering I'm needing them. The squinting gets on my nerves more quickly than the glasses. I really wonder how my what what kind of dirt I had on my hands. What from? That's funny. It appears to have come from the accordion itself, but how? I do not know. So as I go, I'm pushing this way while I set it down to try and make it be well in. I'm actually winding up a little too far in. Um, it's, it's starting to turn the corner. I want it against the corner, but not crawling up the wall. Now let's get rid of some of this. It's getting in the way. That's the paper from the backing. All right, last corner. Now the other challenge is trying to match up that diagonal cut over here. Oh, 
Okay. Well, that's prettier train wrecks, but it should stop the air. That's one side. What do you think? Yeah. Boy, your your view is blurrier than mine. <laughs> All right, let's tackle the difficult side. Now, what I'm thinking is to put this up tight here and leave that as a gap and not not worry about it. Oh, wow. This wood's been chipped out here. This wood's been chipped out here where the pin goes through. Oh, there appears to be a glued-in join between the foam layers here. Huh. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm wondering about that diagonal cut. I think I won't this time. I don't think it really worked all that well. So I'll do the same thing. I'll start here. I'll start on the easy side. And I'll just start working my way through. Always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the right side of life. If life seems jolly rotten, there's something you've forgotten. And that's to laugh and smile and sing a song. Don't be in the dumps. Oh, I'll be silly chumps. And I can't remember any more of this song. But always look on the bright side of life. I can do it when someone else is doing it, if I'm playing the music, but I don't remember it well enough without some kind of help with the lyrics. It's like I know the phrases, but not the order in which they go, and I cannot remember at the moment that I need to how to start the phrase. And since I can't sing anymore, it's not that important. I used to really like my voice, and sometimes other people did too. Enough that I was able to feed myself on the streets of Vancouver by singing for strangers. And they would throw a coin in my hat, and um, I'd buy food with that. I once had someone walk up to me and says, I'll give you a dollar if you stop singing. Just in a mood to try and hurt someone's feelings, I guess. I was all, yeah, okay, thanks for the dollar. Waited until she walked off and continued my thing. She didn't say for how long I had to stop singing. So that was silly. But then by the same token, I remember this one man standing on the street corner with his back to me waiting for the light to change suddenly turned around and came back over to me. He says, that is the most beautiful voice I've ever heard. And he dropped $5 in my pot. So you just never know. There's no accounting for taste. And of course, I had good days and bad days. But these days, I just choke when I try to sing for real. I try to get that full bodied down in the lungs. My asthma takes over and I just can't do it. Ah, well, I sure hope these work. Scissors, here we go. And snip. Yeah, nice meat. 
See, and I was wondering if this would make sense to do this through here. I don't like it. I can always open it back up and do that later. Let's get to the reed blocks. We'll have to test this later. Does it make any sense to put it together when I'm going to pull it apart again on this? So put that off in the corner. And start working on these. I think I'll do these one at a time. I'll take a reed block out, fiddle with it, and then put it back. That way I will get them back in the right places. This is also leather. That's pretty cool. You can actually see it opening and closing. Oh, wait, 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 what? Ooh, look at that. These holes are now open. These holes are now closed. And that are the holes on this reed block. So let's set this aside. Ooh. Now, I don't have a lot of springs to work with. First, the tool. The tool I made. Let's see if we can make this work. This has me nervous. So what I'm going to do is put weight here and then give this a tip so that it exerts curving pressure downward the length of the leather. And yeah, it does seem to make the leather a little flatter. Let's do it again. This is where it's glued, so I'm applying pressure there to ensure that I don't rip it off. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so I'll, any any that still won't do it, that still won't flatten, I will do it, I will use the springs, but I'll start, or I'll come back and put springs on, on some, I don't know, I don't have enough springs to do everything, so I'm not going to do anything until I've done this with everything first. The springs can always go back in their envelope and be saved for something else. Oh yeah, that's working really good. It's making them very flat. Boy, that's a nice simple solution, isn't it? Wow. It's kind of like when you curl up Christmas ribbons, when you, um, with your scissors. It works like that. I almost forgot to hold that end. That could have been tragic. I don't want to make the mistake of doing something. See, each one of these has a leather on the inside that if I was getting it properly done, you'd take all of these right out. They're glued in with wax. You'd melt the wax, you'd take them out, you'd, do the, you, you'd fix the letters on both sides of each reed block, of each reed, and then you'd use wax to glue it all back together. I did that much research, but hello. I can't afford to pay someone that much money and I'm not up to that level of work. Yes.
I'm seeing fingerprints on these. I'm not the first one. My fingers aren't very dirty yet. I like how this, um, the color theme of this accordion has been carried all the way to the inside. The leathers aren't black or brown. Well, those are. But the leathers, you can see when you look at it, they're gold too. Everything's in gold and white and silver. I love that about it. The Italians have style, I guess. Uh, that one's not flat enough. Okay, these aren't very droopy at all, so that's really nice. That's what it's called, is a droopy leather. When the leather is curled so far away from the reed block that it simply can't close at all anymore. Because these get sucked down during the action. They, they get, air pressure sucks them flat. Hmm. Yeah, the air pressure sucks these flat. And then they close the hole. That's how they're supposed to work. Meanwhile, the other one, this metal part, is the audio. That's the tuned noisemaker. That's the part that makes the actual noise, and it's been tuned. Okay, so that's one block. Um... Don't think that was a trouble block to begin with. I don't think that block was giving me trouble in the first place. on to the next one. As the dulcet tones of Mr. Alex Jones ring throughout my house. I just posted on Instagram, Instagram a video of a mouse. The little mouse was scurrying. Under my porch was hurrying. I watched him as he climbed and went into and I can't rhyme. He found his way into the walls of my porch. I thought I smelled mouse in there. Now we know. This leather doesn't even close, isn't even long enough. It's not even properly installed. It actually leaves a small gap at the end. It's probably not that important. And these springs are plastic. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it's working. I have to be quite aggressive with the plastic. Yeah, if I pull it hard enough, it lays flat. Yeah, okay. Same thing on this side. Everything that's slightly lifted. Can be, um, I'll turn this around. It's easier to work that way. And still let the camera see what I'm doing. Yep. That's working. This one's not quite. Yeah. All right. 
it should take care of the buzzy on these. Holy moly, there's like... As part of the tuning, they've had lead or steel or something applied, and they actually have lumps on the ends to help give them the bass note they're after. That's really interesting. So those are the bases, the bass reeds. If I was smuggling cigarettes, I'd take out the bass reeds because that's the part you don't have to play in order to appear to be making music on this thing. Oh, now Mr. is listening to a broadcasting of a Trump rally. I almost think I'd rather he was going to a church with a man named Reverend Jones who really liked Kool-Aid. Sometimes I feel like I can have some sympathy for the Germans back in 1930-something. How helpless they must have felt at times, seeing their friends, their neighbors, and yes, even their husbands turning to the dark side. Because that's what it feels like, like I'm watching my husband turn into a bigot. And I cannot make him stop. Makes him feel good. And the people creating it know that. They know how to make him feel good. And he's going to come upstairs and tell me all about the bathroom in the middle of this recording. Here he comes. Oh, got the taps off. Oh, I see. Well, come show YouTube. Sit I'll right, show you. Sit too. right on top of the tub until I get the others mounted. You know? This is going to be the temporary faucet. These are our original bathtub faucets, and we're going to get a real bathtub faucet soon. And these are the temporaries he's using so we can continue to use the bathroom. There you go. Yeah, I did see you put cork on the bottom. All right, let's do some more reed blocks, and we'll put it together and give it a test run. Be careful, or I'm going to lose this. Oh, maybe I can just... Yeah, my little tiny fingers, that's the way to go. Little fingers, there we go. That's one. Okay, this has also, it has switches. Yeah, it also has switches. Isn't that neat? The silver is the block, airtight. And that's something else is um, to check these key key felts, and they look pretty. They look like they're working good. Can you see that? Can you see the movement? Not really. There, you can see that one shifting. Right. I wonder why there's an open spot. You suppose I'm missing a key entirely? Oh, that's... I'll, I'll find out when I take this block off. doesn't look like there's a hole under there. That's probably a note I simply haven't got. Hmm. 
<laughs> my cute little dog is at my side. Let me show you my cute little dog. Hey, cute little dog. Hi. How you doing, sweetheart? Oh, are you so darling? Yes, everybody loves you. Yes, we do. You've got another hour before supper. Dinner is for another hour. You have to wait. Look at your little pretty little paws. Just sitting there all loungy in luxury. Okay, sorry about making you dizzy. There you go. Back onto the table. Same thing with this reed block. There's a droopy one. Ooh, and here they don't bother closing it at all. There's no leathers on these ones, these really high-pitched ones. <laughs> now, which came first, the accordion or the harmonica? <laughs> I'm not going to need the spring boosters at all. I don't think I'm going to need these booster springs. These leathers aren't bad enough. Although it'll be on the treble. Yeah, here's where I'm thinking I might wind up using it. Got some really bad gapping going on here. Start at the end here. And just start stroking them out, see how flat they lay. And then I'll blow through it. And if I see one that just does not spring back into position, I'll give it one of those springs. This is working so well. It's so effective. It's just amazing. So there's one I want to put a spring on. This one right here, yes? Hmm. Okay, now it's got quite a bit of curve to it. Yes. All right, let's put a dot of glue on there. Let's do that one. Let's see. Uh, maybe I should just go ahead and continue with the stroking first. As I say, I only have so many of these springs, so I don't want to use too many at once. But I think these are the leathers where I'll start using them. That one definitely wants one. I think. Mm -hmm. I'll stroke them all, and based on the results, I'll give some. Yeah, I'm going to stick with plan A. Blow through it and see which ones regain their droopage. Wow, like all of them? <laughs> all right, how many have I got? Let's see. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen,
One, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 2, 3, 4. I think there's 30 here. I'm going to stop counting now and just... Go with 30. All right, this seed, this side really needs it. I'll give them all another round of strokes, but I think this is the side where I need to use these. I think what I'm doing won't keep very long. All right. Yeah, see? Spot of, oh my goodness, a little spot of glue, she says. Uh, I think we're going to have a little more than a little spot here. This is the part where one wants to start going a little faster, but it's unwise to do so. So in the interest of taking my time, picking the ones that stand up really far, really bad. See, I need to curl a lot of these. I need to curl these a little bit. Having good tools helps with confidence. You know, you've got a nice collection of tools, you can probably find what you need to solve a problem. Yeah, I hope this glue's the right. I hope this glue works. <laughs> I should be most wroth if the glue just comes flying off the neck as soon as I go to play the accordion. And how long will it take before it dries, I wonder? I forgot to curve it. Mind you, that's going a lot faster now. I'm getting much better at how much to curve to give it.
When you're chewing on life's gristle, don't grumble, give a whistle, and that'll help things turn out for the best. And always look on the bright side of life. <whistles> always look on the right side of life. <whistles> life seems jolly rotten, there's something you've forgotten. And that's to laugh and smile and sing and dance. Feeling in the dumps, don't be silly chumps. Just purse your lips and so that's the best. And always look on the bright side. There's a one where he goes, the bright side of death. I'm going to shorten this one just a bit. Just before you draw your terminal breath. Do 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 do. Always face the curtain with a grin. Bom bom ba da bom ba dum ba da da da. Do 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 do. And always go bright. Satellite. Always look on the right side of life. <laughs> I'm thinking that these just might buzz if I leave them long. So I'll trim them all to fit. may not be a very good accordion player, but having an accordion that makes obnoxious noises in addition to the noises it's supposed to make will not help. Just might bring some tweezers into work here. These things are hard to hold. Doing all right so far. It looks like the glue is sticking down once it dries, so that's good. Okay, these two should both be done. When I looked at what it took to replace these leathers, my heart about sank. I thought, yeah, I, I can't do that job. But as it happens, you could just use these reed boosters until such time as you're sufficiently invested in your accordion to bother paying a professional to do a proper job of replacing the leathers. Um, although, well, I think an accordion that already has good leathers might well be as expensive as taking a decent accordion and having it done. A good accordion can cost you a thousand bucks, and that's for an old one. New ones are up over two thousand, and that's American money. Ah. Yeah, hey. I think I'll spring this one. Hmm. Keep forgetting which one I was going to put it on. <laughs> My 
little dog is waking up because it's close to his dinner time. He does excellent sleep mode. He's pretty much in sleep mode when he's not eating. But once in a while he gets one of us to play with him. And then he wakes up. I highly recommend dogs with a, with a strong sleep mode. Especially when you're older. Okay, that's one read block. I'll put that back in. What I'll do with the leftovers is I'll put them all together in a nice little envelope and I'll keep them until such time as I need to do more work on this thing. I don't have to use them all up. I can use what I need because I can always buy more, I hope. Probably for quite some time to come. It's getting harder and harder to find a accordion repair, as I said. But then, again, as I was saying, I think the hipster kids are starting to get into accordions. Yeah, so the missing read block isn't a missing read block. It's, there's no note there. And I don't know what that might have represented on the keyboard, but it is curious that they've they've left the holes. I wonder if that relates to the that might be the release button. No. The release button's on the other half. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it can't be the release button because that's on the other half, but it doesn't matter. I don't need to understand these things. I just need to stroke these leathers. Oh yeah. Turn it. Okay. I don't remember to face the camera. And I've got to remember to re-aim the camera for you. There you go. Sorry. I don't have the same setup that Big Clive does. Oh, I love listening to his voice. I put them on at bedtime and I go to sleep listening to that lovely Scottish accent. Manx accent, I guess. Keep, I keep expecting to see a Manx cat go wandering through his, his shots or something. I don't believe he has any pets. Put a spring on that one. I don't know if that's the one I was touching before, but this one here is sticking up proud from the surface. So, yes, we use the word proud for sticking up above the surface as well as a person who thinks they're better than others. And always look Ah, oh, that song is stuck in my head. I mean, there's worse songs to have stuck in your head. Like, never gonna give you up, or let it go, let it go, you know. Oh, yeah, when I do let it go, let it go, the dog thinks that that's like a sing-along time, and he wants to sing. No, really. You don't believe me? Let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Let it go, let it go, turn slam it down. Which one of us sings worse? <laughs> Take him a little 
little while to simmer down. <laughs> oh, we have fun around here. It's simple fun. But it doesn't matter whether your fun is simple or complicated as long as you're having some. <laughs> My silly little dog. Oh, he's a great companion. I love him so much. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think I really need to do a lot more. I think I had more trouble that the gasket was old. Gosh, I hope this is going to show a difference. I hope this makes it more playable. I really, really hope so. It would be so disappointing to be in here and mucking about and then it doesn't play any better than it did before. Okay, this one. Third from the gap. All right. Any more like that? Gosh, not much at all. There's maybe a few on that side. But don't lay flat. I mean, they're, they're not curled at all. Just hardly even droopy. But I have 30 of these things, so let's not stint. Let's not stint for economy. Now, well, I've gone to the trouble of actually opening this musical instrument. I don't think Chime Nerf is still watching. I think I'm doing this all by myself with nobody watching. If you're watching this later, if you do me a favor and hit that like button, it's not its not like you're saying, I approve of this, make more. You're saying, I like you and I want to support you and I want to help you with YouTube's algorithms. So I'm going to click your like button. Okay, we've got a droopy leather here. It's a joke. This thing can get put back together. I don't need to do any more of this. I can put these back in their envelope. I thought I felt one fall on my lap. And this. Oh, this wants to be coiled up a little better than that. And then I'll tape it, tape it down. Oh, I did drop one of these. It was hiding because it's red and so is the top of the table. And my modified tool as well. I'll keep that with these things too. Okay. A little bit of tape on that. So, and that too will fit the envelope, won't it? Yes. It'll fit it and it'll plug it. And then I'll fold it all away in these pieces, these nice letters that Falsetti Accordion sent. To help protect them. They they write a pretty little letter saying thank you for your patronage and then they use it to package the product. And I think that's very economical and clever of them. 
and the product from the, the product is so affordable. I mean, they're not charging more than it costs. They're not charging more than they need to to be able to stay in business. They're not busy trying to uh, keep a Ponzi scheme of vector, investors and stockbrokers going. All right. Take this shut. <laughs> I can't even take paper shut properly. Uh-oh. Careful. I have to clean up this glue. I made a mess of the glue. Well, the glue made a mess. It was leaking the whole time. Surprise! Oh, that's not going to be enough. It's sticky, sticky. It's going to need a wash. I'll take care of that later. So there's, there's wood blocks at the end. There's wood block. The wood is, is cut and fashioned in such a way that the reed block can only go in the way it came out. Of course, you can still lose your screws. <laughs> All right, I found it. Well, this is it. Time to reassemble and test it out. How exciting is that? Okay, let's begin with this. And that. And I don't need to worry about the lining up because this thick part here has to go with this thick part here. She's on. I need to put the pins back. I'm not sure if I need to use a tack hammer or if I can get these in by mat by hand. I think I need to hammer them gently and the tippy tappy tippy tappy. I do have such a thing. I'm such a tool junkie, I've got a set of tools just for the kitchen. And they're much simpler tools than the ones in the workshop. cute little flower design on here or I guess it's not I always thought it was flowers yeah there's a bit of a hint of flowers it's um, yeah. it's just a nice nice finish on it that's all
from the inside. Any sign of grief? No, it looks like it's working. Oh, now the tricky part is don't, I've done this once. I actually put the front on backwards once. Okay, I think that's correct. Here's where the, my mark is going to really come in handy. I can use my mark to make sure I get the front and the put on correctly. I think I've got it right, but I'll check my mark. This is where I put it. Yes, there's a smudge here and a smudge here. And that means I've done them right. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is I'm snapping on the little side clips. There. That'll put some pressure on it while I put in the last of the pins. It's exciting. I know, I know. It's boring. But it isn't. It's exciting. Because once all these pins are in, I get to see if this thing plays properly. And will it be more enjoyable? Will I get more finesse out of it? Hmm. That's what's exciting. The other advantage of taping the pins in, in place, not only do you get them back in the right hole, but you don't lose any while you're working. None of them roll under the fridge. They stay right where you left them until you're ready to put them back. That's it. Let's find out. Um, get the straps all sorted out. Oh, it's been so long since I strapped this on. It's been at least a month, probably longer. Okay, test number one. Hmm. Oh well. Let's see if I can find that C. As usual, no, oh wait.
the buzzing is gone. remember the song that I was playing. not in the mood to practice. Actually, I am in the mood to practice, but not online for the screen because it's going to be like, rah, 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 rah. it's not going to be a performance. So I will try to start practicing nightly and recording nightly like I was. I think that's very good for my accordion dedication. And I'm pleased to say that it was not a complete bust. Of, well, that was fun and now it's just going to sit here looking pretty. I have actually repaired it, and I think that will give me the jazz to get back into working on it. So it's time to end the stream. Bye.